So how do we agree on writing the next block on the blockchain? And that, that is where the famous Bitcoin paper comes in. That is Satoshi Nakamoto's, the first modern application. And what this paper basically solved is that. It's the consensus algorithm. How do we put ourselves in agreement of putting something else next on the blockchain? Now, there are as many ways we can agree on something as there are ways to disagree on something. And notoriously, there are many ways we can disagree. And hence, there are many different ways we can pursue to agree on something. So there are many different consensus algorithms out there. But we have to find some agreement to see like, since this, there's no original, no copy of all these different copies of the blockchain, what do we put onto it next? So there needs to be some kind of consensus recipe, a recipe for a consensus algorithm, basically. So let's read the Bitcoin white paper ourselves a little bit. And I invite you to read it. It's actually very readable. It's not, not too technical, actually. What did Nakamoto say? How did Nakamoto, they, we don't know who it is, solve the consensus algorithm problem? Well, they started with saying, digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending. The double spending was this idea that you have money in your wallet, but you already spend it. So why do you offer me? It's like the, the check bounces. It's that idea. That's the idea of double spending. If you already spend it, then you know somebody has to look into your wallet. So in banking, the bank does that. It says, no, the check bounces. The $100 are gone already. So you cannot take more out. So how do we do that if we don't have a bank to check on what's actually in the wallet? Well, we make, let's see what I say. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. Make it distributed. The network timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof of work. So that's this consensus algorithm. It's their consensus algorithm. Sorry, I fall into myself. We do not know what Nakamoto is, right? Forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. So what is this proof of work? Well, it has to do with the miners. That's why you mine Bitcoins. And proof of work is really, it's a lot of work that you have to do. And basically what you do here is, and I, I will go much deeper into that in the next video when we talk about hashing, but the idea is you do a lot of work and, and you look for something uh, and you mine for it. So for example, I take a little coin and I say, here I have a coin and I mark it. And I say, I have this coin and I fly over the Rocky Mountains and I draw or over the Alps mountain range and I drop this coin there and you guys go look for it. And you are standing there with your shovel and saying, okay, let's look for this one coin that he dropped in the Rocky Mountains. Well, good luck to look for it. It's still easier to look for that than to look for what Bitcoin miners are looking for. Really, trust me. It's very difficult to find that. But that's basically it. They mine, they really look for this, you know, for this grain of gold, which is very unique. Once you find it, it's very easy to verify. So let's say somebody goes out in the Rocky Mountains and they're like, oh, I have it. No, are you sure? Show us. But once anybody found it, it's very easy to verify. Oh yeah, that's it. So we all agree. Oh, you found it. Okay. We give you, we give you something. We give you some reward because you're the one who found it. Clap, clap, clap. We give you some Bitcoins in that case. And then we all write the next block onto it. So that's the proof of work. The amount of work that you have to do is very energy intensive. Same as when you run around the Rocky Mountains, you will expend a lot of energy. And when you compute the Bitcoin mining, uses a lot of energy. And so you would have to redo all of that. And many do that in parallel. And it's, it's just like, it's, it's not worth it. So it, it wouldn't calculate if you, if you wanna redo all of the history of Bitcoin. So that is kind of like you basically, Nakamoto says in his paper, they basically, they vote with their CPUs. That's what they do. Now, that contrasts with proof of stake. So with proof of stake, we don't say go out and do work. And by that, you verify that you really have a stake into this game and you really did the work and you looked into it. We play all this game of looking for the you know, grain of gold in the Rocky Mountains. Here it is more like, well, just put the stakes up. It's like playing poker. It's like, you want to write the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain? Well, then put your money where your mouth is and you move all the chips to the center of the table and you stake them. Now you write the next block on the blockchain. And if we all watch you, it's a distributed, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. And if you do something funky there, your blocks, your, your stakes, they will be slashed. Basically, we take them and you lose all of them. Now, 
you have to put big mountains of chips in the middle if you want to play that game with with these guys there. But that's what they do. Actually, they take, create staking pools. So you give other people yes, and because you need such big amounts, but then you put them on there, and then you basically vouch for doing the right thing, doing the truth by having your stakes on the table. And then if you did the right thing, well, you get a reward. And that's also assigned with some random function. So that's the two most common. And these are called validators because we validate after you put your chips in the middle, we validate if you did the right thing. So they are miners and validators. But these are not the only two consensus algorithms. There are many different consensus algorithms out there. As I said, there are no, so many ways we can agree as we can disagree. And there's a lot of innovation still going on. Now, this one here is very energy efficient. Proof of stake is much more energy efficient than proof of work. And we will talk more about that in the next video. But so these, if you hear this, Bitcoin mining, proof of work, stake, validator, staking, and so forth, this has to do with how we put ourselves into agreement of what is the next block that we write onto the blockchain.